morning, everyone. Welcome here. Let's just uh, pray before we continue. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, Lord, and we thank you for this wonderful day that you have given us, Lord. We thank you for uh, gathering us here in your house of praise, Lord, in your house of prayer, Father. We thank you that uh, that we are able to gather here in, in such freedom and, and untouched uh, physically, Lord. But let your presence be in our midst this morning and, and that we be touched by your spirit, Lord. Father, we thank you for your word that you have blessed us with so richly, and Lord, that we would look at it and and, and see it for what it is, Lord, and uh, Lord, to see you better and, and what your will is for us in our lives, Lord. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'd like to, uh, it's just thinking about the message that Isaac uh, shared this earlier this morning, and um, talking about how... Uh, how the ship was run aground, and um, some of the the sailors wanted to uh, to save the ship and anchor it down better yet, um, and thinking about how that uh, um, how we kind of uh, live like that sometimes too, and and how our ship must run aground and it must fall to pieces before we uh, before we reach safety, and and what they wanted was to uh, secure it so that they had a um, a quick escape. And we sometimes want to do that too. And uh, to keep the things that we, uh, all the baggage that we carried with from our former life, um, we sometimes want to secure that somewhere. And then uh, if, if things don't work out, or so we think, then we have a place to go quickly and, and have a quick escape. And, uh, and it, just thinking of it uh, spiritually, um, the way the sh the, they wanted to save the ship, so that they could escape later on when, when things were right or uh, when the weather um, got better to, to set sail again. And uh, so I think it's, it's something that we can look at and see how, how that is um, physically and yet also the same we can do, uh, look at it spiritually. So today, um, I'd like to talk about uh, something. Um, the title, I named it Clothes, but uh, it's not just the physical clothes. Um, the reason, um, I don't know exactly why it, uh, it came to me, but uh, I was thinking about um, the clothes that, uh, that we wear, yet the clothes we should wear, not physically, this is talking about spiritual clothes and how we ought to clothe ourselves. Um, I know, and, and most of us are raised in, in, uh, in a culture where, where clothes is a big deal, the physical clothes. You dress like this, you like this, and, and there's, there's uh, measurements even in some churches for some things, and, and they're very strict by them. Um, and then I was looking at the Old Testament, and if somebody wants, or if you'd all like to go there to Exodus chapter, I think it is 29, we'll take a look at, uh, at some of the things that had happened there and, and how um, things were actually given by God to uh, the things that the um, measurements and everything were given to them for the uh, the ephods and the breastplate for the priesthood. Now this is all just physical stuff. This is the stuff that they did in the Old Testament. I'm going to read it anyways. And uh, even though the stuff that they did, they chose certain um, materials and, and the things that they were given, the stones, the gold, the blue and the purple, they were all given for a purpose. There is uh, things that, um, that they had meaning to them. So let's just look at it anyways. I'm going to start at ex sorry, Exodus chapter 28, verse, verse 5 there. So it is quite a bit of reading, but uh, let's start anyways. They shall take the gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and the fine linen, and they shall make the ephod of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and fine woven linen, artistically worked. It shall have two shoulder straps joined at its two edges, and so it shall be joined together. And, and the intricately, intricately, I read it perfectly this morning. Intricately <laughs> worked, it shall have two shoulder straps and joined at its two edges, and so it shall be joined together. And the intricate, intricately woven band at the ephod, which is on it, shall be of the same workmanship, made of gold and purple and scarlet thread. The fine woven linen, when you, 
Then you shall take two oink stones and engrave them on the names of the, the names of the sons of Israel, six of their names on the stone and six names on the other stone, in order of their birth. With the work of the engraver in the stone, like the engravings of the signet, you shall engrave the two stones with the names of the sons of Israel. You shall set them in settings of gold, and you shall put the two stones on the shoulders of the ephod as memorial stones in the sons of Israel. So Aaron shall shall bear their names before the Lord, his two shoulders as a memorial. You shall also make settings of gold, and you shall make two chains of pure gold like braided cords and fasten the braided chains to the settings. And now the breastplate. You shall make the breastplate of judgment artistic, artistically woven according to the workmanship of the ephod. You shall make it gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine woven linen. You shall make it, it shall be doubled into a square, a span, shall be its length and a span shall be its width and you shall put settings of stones in it four rows of stones the first row shall be a sardius a topaz and an emerald this shall be the first row and the second row shall be turquoise sapphire and a diamond the third row a jacin and an agate and an amethyst and the fourth row a barrel and oinks and a jasper they shall be set in gold settings and the stones shall have the names of the sons of israel twelve Twelve, according to their names, like the engravings of this signet, which one of its own, with each one with its own, they shall be according to the twelve tribes. You shall make chains for the breastplate at the end of the, at the end, like braided cords, pure gold, and you shall make two rings of gold for the breastplate and put the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. Then you shall put the the two braided chains of gold in the, in the two rings which are in the ends of the breastplate and the other two ends of the two braided chains you shall fasten to the two settings and put them on the shoulder straps of the ephod in the front. You shall make two rings of gold and put them on the ends of the breastplate on the edge of it which is on the inner side of the ephod and two other rings of gold you shall make and put them on your shoulder straps underneath the ephod toward its front right at the seam above the intricately intricately woven band of the ephod. They shall bind the breastplate by means of its rings to the rings of the ephod using a blue cord so that it is above the intricately woven band of the ephods and so that the breastplate does not come loose from the ephod. So Aaron shall bear the names of the sons of Israel and the breastplate judgment over his heart when he goes into the holy place as a memorial before the Lord Continually, and you shall put the breastplate of judgment, the Urim and the Thummim, Thummim, and they shall be over Aaron, Aaron's heart when he goes in before the Lord. So Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel over his heart before the Lord continually. That's as far as I'm going to read there, but we can just see uh, see how God has given them um, very certain instructions on on the breastplate and the ephod that they are to that they are to be how they're to be made and and colors um and yet the, the stones that are to be used as well as the gold and how how they're to be made <clears throat> when they're uh ministering in in the holy place just uh, just seeing how the old testament how how the ministers in the temple were to be dressed and and yet they were seen by this too, and and they had all these things for significance, like blue and purple. They, um, I think, purple meant some sort of a royalty, but blue also meant uh, an office. They had a higher office than any other general citizen. So it's uh, like I said that these these colors they had meaning to them and and a purpose for them. But today, um, I want to go to Ephesians. How. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5 is where I want to go. So the clothes we wear, um, spiritual clothes, rather than being looked at physically. Um, Ephesians chapter 5 here says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love. Be, be clothed with love. As Christ also loved us and has given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice for God unto us, for, for us, 
for a sweet smelling aroma. This is how we ought to be dressing. We don't, uh, we don't get dressed with clothing to put on a show so that we get seen by the rest of the world. Um, they are from so and so, not for any purpose like that. We are to be dressed with these things, the fruits of the Spirit, which we'll also be reading for these reasons that we are to be seen as God's children rather than the things that we wear. I'm sure the Bible does, does talk to us about um, dressing, dressing modestly, but, uh, but the dressing of, of our bodies come from within. What the heart is full of will, will overflow. And so uh, when, when we walk in these ways, that it, this is what we clothe ourselves with. Now looking at clothing, where we always look at this as the armor of God. Um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16 through 20. Um, other pieces that, that we wear. So let's look at that. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14 through 20. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with per perseverance and supplication for the saints. And for and uh, just looking at, uh, before I read further, looking at uh, what Paul is saying here, and then when he uh, goes on further here, when he's wearing these things, it gives him exactly what he needs to do, what he's talking about right here. Um, and for me, that with utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. It is only when we are wearing these things that we can do these things that Paul is speaking about, that he is able to speak boldly, and to, uh, to made, make known the mystery of the gospel. And we do find uh, a few other scriptures too that it, it talks about um, the different things. It, it, it talks about... Um, girding yourself uh, the different ways. And uh, here in 1 Peter 1, verse 13, it says, Therefore, gird, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that it is brought to you by the revelation of Jesus Christ. It says to gird up your mind. You can't even do that with clothing. And to rest your hope fully upon the grace that it is to be brought to you by the revelation of Jesus Christ. When we're focused on him, then our minds are girded. Also going to look at uh, 2 Corinthians 2. Here's one that um, perfume it talks about. The other thing that, uh, that we clothe ourselves in. I'm going to start reading at 14, 14 and 15. It says, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the, fragr the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. 
thinking about this, when we, when we know and we've been saved by the gospel, we've heard the good news, and we, we are then a fragrance to those who are lost and to those who are perishing. It is our lives. Our lives are the, the only Bible that they do read. So how are we living it? If we are setting off an aroma to them, a sweet-smelling aroma, then they too can be saved. I was thinking about um, some books that I've read where complaints come from, especially uh, in the eastern part of the world, um, whether Africa or even the Middle East, and they complain about the western preachers coming there and bringing the white man's God. Because they come there, they live there in their western clothes, whether it's um, very often it happened, especially in Africa, in the poorest parts. They came there with uh, nice collared button-up shirts, dress pants, living in five-star hotels, and yet during the day they'd come and preach, uh, preach the gospel to those who are living in the slums. And at night they'd go back to their five-star hotel. It's not much of a sweet-smelling aroma to them. If you want, if you want to be if you want them to be saved, you, you must become like one of them and live like them because they, they don't smell a whole lot like that. It stinks to them. Because if God only uh, saves the rich then and has, uh, has standards, then they want nothing to do with it. I did read a few other scriptures and I'll be actually pretty short today again as, as usual, but uh, um, also thinking about uh, one of the other scriptures that I, I was reading this morning, how, how we ought to uh, conduct ourselves in love. And, and oh, in Thessalonians, sec, 2 Thessalonians, it talks about um, Paul. He talks to them about, uh, and he praises them actually, about how they are, are, how they're conducting themselves with love and he doesn't even have to teach them because God has already taught them. And, and he tells them, I'm not even quite sure where I've seen it. Right here, uh, 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4. No, sorry, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting at verse 9. But concerning brotherly, brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another, and indeed you do so toward the brethren who are all in Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life. Actually, sorry, that's as far as I was going to read. But uh, how he praises them about um, leading uh, a brotherly love and living that way. And uh, I'm not even sure where I read it this morning, but to also to love those outside as we love those inside. Paul talks about it, and, and that's how we ought to be living ourselves, and these are the things that we ought to clothe ourselves with, rather than being overly concerned about the pieces of clothing that we wear. This is something that was on my mind that, uh, that I'd share it with you this morning, and... Uh, not just, and mostly for myself, to, uh, to remind myself how I ought to conduct myself in a way that is pleasing to the Lord and seeing what He wants from me and, and, and how we ought to live. And it talks about the first fruits of the Spirit. When we think about those, how often do, and do I conduct myself in those ways? I have to ask myself. It's a question I can ask, and um, that's what I'd like to leave you with this morning. Let's just pray in closing. Heavenly Father, I come before you, Lord, this morning, and, and Lord, I just thank you for your word and, and how, it, uh, how it teaches us, Lord. We thank you for the Spirit, God, that, uh, that you have sent it as a teacher to us, and, and Lord, that, uh, that we can look to you for guidance and direction, Lord, in all your ways, Father, and... and uh, Thank you that, uh, that your word shows us in, in how we ought to clothe ourselves in love and brotherly love and, and compassion, mercy, and, and all these things, Father. 
Lord, rather than to just being overly focused on physical clothes all the time. And uh, Lord, we just thank you for that. Lord, let us love those who are outside the church and, and also with brotherly love to love those inside, Father. God, again, I thank you for your word. And Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who has died upon the cross for our sins and, and resurrected again back to the, to the right hand of you, God. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.